So I have been an IP attorney for almost a decade. I've actually, yeah, probably a little bit more than a decade. I've been a patent attorney for longer than that, um, but I've been an IP attorney since 2020, so 2013. I passed my bar exam 2012, but it takes six months and they'd have to do like some interviews and stuff like that and they'll do travel. But anyway, my, my point is pretty, pretty simple. Any lawyer, any IP attorney, anyone is going to tell you that the reserve list is not an actual binding contract because it is not specific enough. So when you have a contract, at the very least, it's got to identify the two parties. One party is Wizard of the Coast. Okay, that's great. Who is the second party that the contract is meant to benefit? Uh, in this case, people say, oh, people have reserve list cards. Okay, when the contract was made, some of those people who have reserve list cards, they weren't even born yet. So can you make a contract to encompass millions of players and potentially hundreds of millions of future players? You could, but it would have to be, that, that already is very, very vague. So the more specific the contracts are, the more likely the contract will hold in court. So already we have a very vague party standing. Who can be part, who can sue? Um, if you never played Magic back then, could you sue? At the time the contract was, the quote, con, let's call it contract was made, you didn't play Magic. You only bought Magic recently. And how many players that exist who were playing Magic at the time, like myself, are still around? And is that the only group of people that, con so already we have like, a very interesting question of what group of people was it the people who played magic and had reserve list cards when they the con when they announced it is it everybody is it all future generations in like a hundred years from now does it cover them too so we have a very vague definition of who the beneficiary party would be which is okay i mean you could say all the heirs or so on but this is a little bit more interesting because anyone can say, oh, I own a reserve list card. So is it everyone who's ever purchased a reserve list card? Is it everyone who purchased a re reserve list? Is it everyone who survived Chronicles? Is it a person who quit Magic because of Chronicles? They promised a reserve list and then they said, oh, I'm back again. Is it that person? Because that sounds like the type of person that it would be and it wouldn't be for everybody. But okay, now let's talk about something that all lawyers know. If you sign a contract and the contract is between party A and party B, let's say the contract is um, your, your dog does not poop on my lawn, okay? Uh, and you've been neighbors for 30 years, 30 years. So you signed a contract 10 years in, your neighbor's dog is still pooping. If your dog poops on my lawn, you give me $100. Okay, let's say that's the contract. Well, okay, the dog, you know, the dog is continuing to poop on the, your lawn. You're not suing, you're not enforcing a contract, and you're not getting $100. This happens for 20 years. So even if you had a contract, even if you had a binding contract of some party on, you know, some part beneficiary party, you did not enforce the contract. Nobody, when they reprinted Wheel of Fortune, no one sued. You know, they reprinted that as a judge promo. They reprinted survival of the fittest. Nobody. So like, you cannot say that this party of millions of people did not know they were actually reprinting with the correct backs, by the way, ju as judge promos, reserve list cards, cradle. That's another one I forgot in the last video. There are multiple, multiple reserve list cards that were reprinted in judge promos. There were uh, the From the Vault set, which had mocks and memory jar. It might have had some other stuff, but those are the two big ones, right? So how can you then go about and say, okay, well, it's 20 years now, your dog poop, so okay, imagine, we, 10 years of dogs pooping, and then we agreed, okay, we signed a contract, you know, dog, your dog does not poop on my lawn. If I catch it pooping, you will give me $100. Okay, fine. Okay, for the next 20 years, you're assuming your dog, maybe it's not even a dog, something's gotta survive 20, 30 years. 
I don't know what it would be. Maybe it's a very super old dog, the longest living dog in history. Um, but if you're, if the neighbor's dog keeps doing that and you don't ever make it, you know, a, a deal about collecting or enforcing the contract, the contract, if there should be one, which I don't even believe there is one, has not been enforced. There's been no lawsuits. There has been, you know, no discussions from the neighbor, clearly. Nobody has said anything. I mean, outside of maybe Reddit posts, right? Well, why would the court enforce that today? Clearly, their, neither party thought this contract was real. And that's my point. Maybe it was a fake, it, maybe it was a joke, maybe it was an offhanded comment, and then you know, to your neighbor, oh, it was very funny, right? Maybe it was told in such a way that the neighbor didn't actually think he was getting into a contract, but you thought you got into a contract, but you didn't enforce it for 20 years. You can't then enforce it today because there is a pattern of history of you not enforcing it, of the contract not being real, right? So if the contract was real, why would you not enforce it at will? Why would you not enforce? You wouldn't wait 20 years for the 30 year anniversary to then be like, oh, this product offends me. I'm going to, there's going to be nobody who will sue. Nobody. I mean, there's a lot of magic players who are lawyers, right? They're not going to take this case. There are a lot of people like Rudy Chan who have a lot of reserve list cards in stake. And then this product is not a direct challenge to his holdings. The next product will be. The next product with the correct back will absolutely be a challenge to all the reserve list holders and it's coming. I have no doubt that a product that is a reprint, maybe they use new artwork, maybe they don't, is coming for both Power 9, the dual lands and everything. And it will be legal playable. There won't be any commander you know, issues, right? Because at the end of the day, it'll be uh, it'll be a legal product. It won't have the proxy back, which is the mistake I think they made. What they should have done is they should have just straight up printed it. So the number one complaint it seems people have is that it's a proxy. If you change the back out, are people complaining as much? And you made it cheaper, obviously. No. The reserve list was never, in my opinion, it was never even real. Like it, the, the reason it wasn't real from a legal perspective, how can you say all magic players under the future? Like it's just so like you could say all people born into the family and so on, because you know, in trust in the States, that's done very often. Like you can say, hey, this trust is for not just your son, not just you, but if you have a son, then I, you know, they can get into the trust. I mean, they, they do this all the time, right? But that's a very limited line, lineage, if you will. So that's still a very narrow class of people. You can't just say, oh, all magic players forever. And all, <laughs> I mean, it's just such a huge class of potential people. And that huge class, none of them spoke up. None of them sued when they did reprint. They actually reprinted the reserve list. Nobody did nothing. So why would you do something? Why would you doing something 20 years later actually help when they're, they have precedents that, hey, we did do this already. And we actually did it with the correct. So what is coming next down the line is what people are going to fight more over. The Rudy Chans, the, you know, the vintage magic. They're going to get pissed when this happens. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's a Black Lotus with the correct back that is legally playable in all formats. That is what's coming down the line. Now, when will that come? Will that come tomorrow? Probably not. Will it come a month from now? I don't know. It will come a year from now. It will come 10 years from now. Who knows? But when Wizard of... You know, I, I actually know when it's coming. Whenever Hasbro loses too much money, the stock price goes down a, a lot, they will come up with that product. They already have the product made. It's, it's very simple. They just change out the backs. You realize that product has already been made. The product that is a nightmare for people who have reserve list cards is already made. They have the front, which they've redesigned and made new, and they already have the back. The back is the card of every magic set. They just got to print it. And trust me, when the stock goes down, things are not, you know, stockholders are getting a little mad. Yeah, it's going to be, but once they play that game, it's over. 
Because what else could they do? What else could they do better? So that's my point. There's nothing that they can do better, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, what's better than a real Black Lotus in this game? Nothing, right? Bye, guys.